Hello and welcome back to the third realm. We have a new addition to the collection this week. I just received this lovely My 1147 class locomotive from the DSB, finally, and I thought we should have a first look at it together. First, let's have a quick model overview as usual. This is model number 3067, which is one of the Merklin classics. It remained on the catalogue for over 30 years and only underwent minor cosmetic changes during that time. It remained uh, technically virtually identical. The first version appeared in the programme in 1964. The same year, a second version was introduced to uh, make some corrections in errors on the decals that were used. The little frame at the front of the locomotive was removed. In 1966, the decals disappeared and were replaced by printed labels. The model remained in this shape until 1975, where a new livery was introduced in line with a change at the DSB. Unfortunately, Merklin didn't get the font type right, so in 1977, a version 6 was uh, introduced to correct the error. The model remained the same until 1987, that year, a final version, as far as the general program is concerned, was introduced. The changes consisted in a darker shade of red on the cabs. In 1992, Merklin gave the model number a final send-off by producing a special series that was for sale in Denmark in 1992 and worldwide in 1993. It's classified as version 10 to reflect the uh, different livery used on this model. Let's look at a few vital statistics. The model measures 20.5 centimeters buffer to buffer. It is of a full metal construction, so both body and chassis. It is equipped with a large flat collector motor, also known as LFCM motor, which drives three axles. Uh, the bogey is equipped with four traction tires. The model is fitted with electric lighting with three lights on both ends, which are permanently on. And it is also equipped with simple hook couplings. Now, here is a bit of high-level information about the prototype for context. The model represents a class MY2 of the DSB, the Danish National Railways. It looks a bit American, and for very good reasons. It was designed by Nohab, a Swedish company, who had acquired a license from General Motors in the United States to build locomotives based on the design of their F-Series. The class was fitted with the same EMD 567 diesel engines used in the GM design. These motors are used to produce electricity that powers electric motors located in the bogies. The locomotive produced 1500 to 1950 horsepower and was capable of speeds of up to 133 kilometers per hour. The class was used for mixed services and capable of operating in double traction. Some units were even fitted for push-pull services in the Copenhagen area. All in all, 59 units were produced and remained in service at the DSB until the late 1990s. They were produced in three batches. The first four units entered service in 1954. An additional 45 units were delivered between 1956 and 1958, and a final batch, equipped with more powerful engines, entered service between 1964 and 1965. Our prototype belongs to the last batch. It entered service in 1964 in the then-official Burgundy livery of the DSB. 
it received a new livery in 1972 and it carried on its duties until its withdrawal in 1997 or 1998. It then moved to Germany, where it served under numerous private railway operators. It was acquired by NEG in 1999. It received a new class number, the V170-1147, and a new livery in the process. It was then transferred to Eurotrack in 2001. I haven't got a picture of the exact prototype there. In 2003, the 1147 found its way to Eichholz. It was repainted a few times, but I quite like the nostalgic Nohab GM livery they used there. And finally, in 2007, Strabag acquired the locomotive and still uses it until today. I have put various links in the description for the sources I've used and useful uh, sources of information regarding this model if you're interested. Right, it's time to have a look at my 3067. Mine is a version 6. It came in its original box, the typical blue box from the 70s, early 80s. It's got the right stickers on both sides, a few storage marks here and there, perfectly understandable for something that's over 40 years old. There's one big tear in the uh, window of the box. It's a bit of a shame, but I think I have no other choice than living with it. Uh, we've got the uh, original instructions, that's always good. And the model doesn't look too bad at all from here. I'm going to take it out of its box. Come on. Yeah, not bad at all. Right, I'm going to put it on its presentation rail and we'll have a closer look. And there we are. And doesn't the model look stunning? I really like the Nohabs and the DSP version. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that model. No uh, scratch, no missing plastic window or anything. You can see a few white dots here and there. They are just bits of styrene from the packaging which have uh, come loose and stuck to the locomotive. So nothing uh, serious there that can simply be wiped off. The model was sold to me as a freshly serviced and fitted with new traction tires. I think it's time for us to move to the layout and check if the seller was truthful. So there we are. I'm going to uh, rail this little beauty. There we go. All done. Then I'm going to give it a bit of power. Does move forwards and backwards. The lights are working. Excellent. Well, it certainly looks as if the model has been serviced not too long ago. Let's uh, give it a try. We have a braking section there, that's why the locomotive slows down. So I'm going to let the model go around the layout a few times to see if anything goes wrong. After a few rounds, it does look like the model is behaving itself. Yeah, not bad. I think it's a bit noisy for a model that's just been serviced, but I might be wrong. OK, I think it's time to have a look at what cars we can use with this uh, model. So we only have a couple of choices. If we start with coaches, we have an express car, model number 4045, which was available during the 1980s. Uh, in 1986 87, there was a special series produced of a uh, commuter service coach under model number 4025. Both these coaches are horrendously expensive. They're among the most expensive coaches you can buy from the 1980s production. 
If we look at freight, we had a few choices as well in the general program. First of all, we had the Tuborg BIA car, uh, reference number 4536. Then we had a bit later on the Fax BIA car, its reference number 4565. And there was a special edition box car produced in 1986-87 for Denmark only. Uh, model number 4403. There were also, in addition, numerous special advertising series that were commissioned by various companies in Denmark. Uh, a look at eBay should uh, reveal uh, quite a few uh, possibilities. I have a few 4045 coaches, which I slowly but surely added to the collection one by one over the last few years and I've never used them. Let me get one of them out of its packaging so that we can have a look. Yeah, it's not in a bad shape. I'll take the other ones out of their boxes and there is one of them which has a roof that seems to be a bit worse for wear. I hadn't noticed that. I must have forgotten to check. Let me see if I can do something about it. I'll take a uh, cotton bud with a bit of WD-40. Maybe that's going to help. Yes, that's helping. So I'm going to drench the roof in WD-40 and clean things up a bit more thoroughly. Right, I think it looks much better now. Yeah, look out shiny it is. It's not a uh, perfect coach, uh, but it's uh, nice nevertheless. It's got interior lighting fitted by the looks of it. Oh, and it came with Danes. Excellent. Right, time for my favorite activity. Let's rail all these little treasures and see how things look. Yeah, not bad. I've railed some of the coaches differently so you can see both sides. Let's check the interior lighting is working. Give it a bit of power. It is working. Now the uh, passengers can read their newspapers. Excellent. Lovely little thing. Right, it's time for a first test run. Oops, that was a bit harsh. Let me uh, go and set the route. Nearly done. And we're off. Well, it seems to be behaving itself so far. No problem on the turnout. Looks like the couplings are well adjusted. We are braking on the braking section as usual. Next turnout. No problem there either. The curve's okay. And this turnout is fine too. Excellent. So we're going to be a bit daring now and send the locomotive on the main line and see what happens. The station siding is fine. And off we go on the main line. Negotiating the crossing OK. And it stops. Hmm. Let's try and uh, get it back into gear. Seems to be uh, stuttering a bit. Yeah, that's not right.
and it stops again. Hmm, bizarre. Let me try and move it. Oh, it doesn't respond. That's bizarre. Yes, it goes back and it doesn't go forward. Alright. So I've given the locomotive a push and we're back in business, but it's not right. The uh, locomotive is stuttering when it turns. Let's see what it does on the ramp. Sorry for the framing. Yeah, that's not right. I don't think the seller was truthful when he said that the locomotive had been freshly serviced and fitted with new traction tires. I'm going to have a look at this. Grrr. I didn't fancy making a servicing video, so I'll save you that bit. But basically I had to do a thorough clean and a complete swap of traction tires. The seller was lying. So it's take two now and the locomotive is negotiating the areas where it was stuttering before without any issue. OK, I think it's time for us to simply enjoy the consist as it runs around the layout. I shall rejoin you at the end of the video. Enjoy! So we are nearly at the end of the video. I think you'll agree with me that this consist looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I still have a bit of work to do on the locomotive though. Uh, I haven't done a full full service. I've just done enough to get it to run. But I'll do this when I do a running session with it later on at some point. For now I'd like to thank you very much for watching. It's very much appreciated. I'd also like to thank all the subscribers to the channel who found the content interesting enough 
to hit the red button and activate their notification to get notified of new uploads on the channel. Thanks also for all the likes I'm getting, it's uh, very rewarding and keeps me going. Bye for now!